Hey guys, and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today, I wanted to talk about my four main reasons that I'm excited for Squadron 42, and basically why you should be excited about it too. So I'll start off on a slight tangent. What is Squadron 42? Squadron 42 is the single player campaign of Star Citizen. You take the role of a rookie UEE Navy combat pilot in a cinematic single player epic space adventure in the Star Citizen universe. It's an immersive space sim combat first person shooter hybrid created by Chris Roberts, father of the Wing Commander series. It is a AAA game in its own right. It's going to be uh, released in three episodes, which are all going to be fully featured AAA games. And Squadron 42 Episode 1 is planned to come out fully in 2016, so this year. So what makes Squadron 42 worth playing different from other space sims that are already out there? So storyline and lore wise, the Squadron 42 storyline is set some years before the MMO Persistent Universe Star Citizen game. You play a rookie Navy combat pilot, but Squadron 42 was planned almost to be the spiritual successor of the Wing Commander series, a fully fleshed out first person universe to be experienced by players during a time of war. Expect a typical Chris Roberts storyline full of combat, powerful, interesting characters, loss, wingmen that you actually like or hate, a powerful enemy, in this case the Vandal, and things may not be exactly as they seem story-wise. For some, it will be a nostalgia fest. For others, it will be the reviving of the single-player space sim on PC. But lore-wise, it's a lot more than that. CIG have been building a huge, rich lore behind this game. The entire timeline from 2075 all the way up to 2946, which is up to date and after the events that squadron 42 will convey um we're going to have companies ships people planet systems uh, they all have a huge amount of information and design behind them already that helps bring this universe to life the alien races here too the vandal the xian the uh, tavarin the kerfak the banu they all have their own real languages and and their own like histories biology uh, character behind them this all helps support the storytelling of the game and help you to immerse yourself within that. It also gives us something to read at the moment while we're waiting for the game to come out. It's already there and planned out. The cast too, for this story, for the lore of the game, it's all pretty damn impressive. We've got Gary Oldman, Mark Hamill, John Rhys Davies, Gillian Anderson, Andy Serkis, Mark Strong, uh, Craig Fairbrass, uh, Rona Mitra, Liam Cunningham. There are so many people and there's a huge supporting cast that we don't even know yet these and more will play your wingman crewmates enemies and important characters in your squadron 42 experience chris roberts has spent a good few months in a motion capture shoot with all of these actors directing and getting the material required to bring their performances to life it's rare to see such an impressive cast for a film, let alone a game, and they're all going to be rendered in-game, at least in some form. Some of them are going to be aliens, maybe. Um, some of them might look qu quite a lot different from their actual original actor. We don't entirely know for all of them, and that's quite exciting. The stuff we have seen so far with Mark Hamill and Gary Oldman and John Rhys-Davies and Andy Serkis and Gillian Anderson has been incredibly well, promising. So, for me, it's the technology that we have now and that they're using here that allows them to obtain incredibly detailed and accurate performances with audio, facial and body performance that's going to give us a mix of an interactive movie and a game together that we haven't really seen combined before like this. Another major draw is the graphics design and I suppose the immersion that that brings all together. Squadron 42 is built on a heavily modified Cry engine and that pushes the boundaries in a lot of areas. It is the bleeding edge of technology. Fidelity is a word that is used a lot when describing Star Citizen as Squadron 42. It is going to be incredibly detailed and beautiful graphically. And I mean really, really great looking. The various CIG studios have spent a huge amount of time on 
creating incredibly detailed assets and environments. They've also made all sorts of breakthroughs as well on uh, and performance gains on this engine. So facial tech-wise, they've gone a few steps further than Rise Son of Rome with Squadron 42's facial technology in the CryEngine, adding more layers of details to the skin. Even the pupils of the eyes react to light. The performance that we saw by Gary Oldman as Admiral Bishop um, in the Senate speech was just superb. And this is even getting even more love, attention and polish. This was just the first iteration of it that we saw. The game is a PC exclusive. Now, this is actually quite a good thing, especially for PC gamers. It means the game will be optimised for the PC. It's not a port. It's not being capped at 30 frames a second. It doesn't have to lose features. So it's going to be scalable. We're going to be able to use it at all levels of PC, or at least from medium to top end. And... At the top end of PC hardware, where it's going to be fully utilised, you're going to get an amazing experience. And that's what some of us want. The ships as well from that, the Star Citizen ships, they've been given so much time, love, design. There are manufacturers for each of those ships that they've made that have their own style. And then each of those ships or those manufacturers have their own brief and role that fits into Squadron 42 and the lore in the universe at large. But each of these ships will be a flying, functioning work of art. When we come on to physics and systems a little bit later on, I'll explain that a little bit better. But we're not just talking fighters and single-seater ships here. Squadron 42 is a first-person experience. You're going to be moving around large, highly detailed environments on capital ships, fighting in uh, first-person shooter uh, elements outside of your ship, firing gun turrets and manning other systems, as well as having a whole experience of the pre-mission, getting ready, getting anticipated for a mission you're about to do, and then launching out of your ship to that mission. And it's all going to be done seamlessly in a game, and then you're going to be returning after your mission. I love that idea. A lot of games will just do the mission, and then you're done, whereas this will be you're interactive in the whole process before and after. And between missions even, you're going to be able to interact with your crew, wingmen uh, and characters in the game, explore your ship and surroundings. It will be a truly interactive, immersive experience that will have a lot of replayability because of that. Because you're not going to be able to see everything the first time. And yes, it will also support all major VR hardware. In the alpha for Star Citizen now, we can see a lot of this engine coming together and the fact that it's looking so great now without any polish is something to really be excited about too. So obviously some of its features and gameplay uh, are going to be the main thing here, bringing all the parts of the game together. As said earlier, it's a first person experience. You can leave your ship and interact with the universe. You'll be fighting on foot and not just your ship here. There are some other great mechanics and features in play here as well though. The physics and damage stuff. So weapons, damage, flight engines, thrust, g-forces, everything is based on physics and materials. So getting shot in an area where you have armour, if you're on foot, um, means that the armor's been hit. You might get hit in a joint though or where the armor's weak and that could penetrate and damage your, your arm or you might need medical attention. Different materials will react differently to different damage types. So layers of clothing underneath your armor may help reduce damage from a laser blast and or um, conversely layers lasers might melt through the hull on your ship whereas a ballistic round would penetrate through it. And the damage to your ship will be exactly where you've been hit. You could be hit uh, in a vital power pipeline that would um, mean that your engines don't work so effectively or you're not getting power to your engines or your, a round could luckily pass through a, a hole that's already in your ship. Literally a, a, a ballistic shell could go straight through another hole another ballistic shell had made. There are highly detailed layers and meshes for each of these ships for these different damage states and they all look awesome as they are at the moment and they're going to get even more polish. The flight model as well, so engines, mass, placement of thrusters, how much power the thrusters are getting, how you're moving, what you're moving through, this is all going to affect the way the ship moves and handles. The intelligent flight um, computer system model tries to um, number crunch and work out how much thrust and power is needed to do what you're telling or trying to tell your ship to do. But obviously with damage and other problems, things might not always go as intended. 
This IFCS model is quite in depth and a lot of time and effort has been made uh, to, to make it work for Star Citizen. And this is sort of combined with the item system. All systems on a ship communicate if they need to. So power goes from your power plants along wires and pipelines to the systems that need power. Coolers will take that power and then channel heat from components to stop them overheating. CPU and avionics data might need to get to other systems that require them. These systems have needs and requirements that during use or combat could get disrupted or require some form of management. That all requires a bit of thought to be used as a pilot, but the fact that all working together is pretty damn cool. It's a living, breathing system that you might not be able to have much of an effect on if you get hit by an asteroid and it takes out your, your fuel line or something. And EVA as well, I mean, that's another exciting thing. Zero-G combat is a cool concept. The fact that you can leave your ship. Ships are going to have to have gravity generators, so normally on stations or capital-sized ships in Star Citizen and Squadron 42. These can be turned off or destroyed, meaning that we're likely to be fighting in low gravity or zero gravity at some points in the Squadron 42 campaign. The EVA system allows you to basically have a mini IFCS um, system. So in the same way that a ship does, but you're going to be having that as a harness on you, uh, on a player, on a foot, so you can fly around space just as a person, effectively. Not long distances, very short distances, but it's pretty cool. There is going to be magnetised boots and lots of different ways to fight in Zero-G. I think the Vandal ships as well have low gravity rather than no gravity, so you might be jumping around everywhere uh, if you board them and you'll be fighting Vandal aliens that are going to be using their low gravity to their advantage, jumping and hiding and um, I don't know, they could be bloody anywhere, couldn't they? Low and zero gravity brings a new dimension to exploration and combat in this first person shooter game. And I suppose my last major point is that there's no publishers and the way that they do their open development. Star Citizen and Squadron 42 was an incredibly ambitious project, originally on Kickstarter, trying to revive the PC space sim genre. It's now the most crowdfunded thing of all time, with over $112 million of crowdfunded monies. So what does this really mean for, for the game? Well, being funded by the fans and backers, yes, 100% funded by fans and backers, allows for a variety of perks for game development. How many times have we been burnt um, or um, annoyed by unfinished or lacking games where publishers have been primarily interested in timescales and sales for the short term, their short term cash grab businesses? So Squadron 42, however, is only beholden to the backers, the fans and CIG themselves. There's no strict timescales for the game to be completed. This may seem counterintuitive, but this has allowed them the time to get everything working as intended without having to make drastic cuts and for the scope of the game to be massively improved and expanded. There's much more money for game development as well. There isn't a publisher taking a cut. The backers are going to get much more drastic a say in the direction of the game and its balance as well. So balance wise that's more Star Citizen but the direction of the game and um, some of the way the ships fly and stuff Part of this open development means that we're going to see a lot of the um, ship design mechanics uh, of the game and a huge amount of testing that can be done by players change how the game actually works and plays. Now for Squadron 42, a lot of that is actually story and assets that will be kept hidden from us. And a lot of that won't be changed. We won't be able to have a direction on because that is the vision of Chris Roberts. That's the story he wants to tell. We're not going to have be able to have that much influence over it. They want the game to be a surprise and at least not spoiled. But with Star Citizen and the Mini PU, we get to test and give feedback and a huge amount of game concern threads and that sort of stuff will appear and get addressed from weapon balance to ship design to the lore about the universe. And that does have an effect on that finished game Squadron 42. Lore might change, ships might change, designs of stuff might change and new features or at least features might get polished and rebalanced for that game if they're discovered while we're testing it at the moment. And that's one of the things I love about open development. That's why one of the things I love about the way the game's been funded. We, me and you, get to influence the direction of this game. And it's something that I've really wanted for ages. 
So if you like the space sim genre, then Squadron 42 is really going to be a highlight on your gaming bucket list. The progress and work they've already revealed so far, and the alpha for Star Citizen we have right now, all excite me for what's to come. Anyway, guys, that's why I'm excited for Squadron 42. Um, it's a little bit different from why I'm excited about kind of Star Citizen. Star Citizen excites me because I am an MMO player. Uh, I, I I love games like that. I love the social aspect of the game. Single player games, I haven't really enjoyed many for, for quite a long time. Free Space 2 was one of the, 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 the last games I really enjoyed. Half-Life 2, I suppose, as well. Um, but very few single-player games. And I loved the multiplayer in Half-Life 2, I suppose, more than I loved Half-Life 2. So, yeah, I mean, Free Space 2 is one of the last games I've really enjoyed. And this is going to be amazing, Squadron 42. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. That's my reasons for being hyped for Squadron 42. But please tell me if you're excited for different reasons or not excited or if you're looking forward to a totally different game or if you've got problems or concerns about Star Citizen or Squadron 42 because you're entitled to them. Just please play friendly with others and be uh, polite. Uh, there are going to be games, single player games like this that aren't for you and Squadron 42 and Star Citizen isn't going to be for everyone. Uh, but please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the verse.